Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. You hit the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hank. This is episode 69. This joint is probably it's not even nasty, y'all. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Two very special guests in the building today. Introduce yourself to the audience. Ladies first. Hey guys, it's your girl Sunny, GFT Radio Lady. <laughs> She's going to not say sex with Sunny, which is why I said we're not nasty today. I had it all lined up, and then Sunny didn't. Even oh, I just, I just left you. Down. I'm sorry. I am, <laughs> I am the host of sex with Sunny, absolutely. And um, to Heim's point, nobody's having sex with Sunny, at least not today. <laughs> no. That's every other Friday you can have sex with Sunny. We're gonna get into that a little later, Unc. Yeah, this is Uncle B from uh, BBG Bridging the Gap Podcast. I'm here with you. All right. Now, y'all already know July the tor- July the 31st, July 31st will be How to Hustle Live Show. We were doing a live show again that will be at 4901 Catherine Street, 4901 Baltimore Ave. I'm my fault. 4901 Baltimore Ave. We it's Baltimore Ave or Catherine Street, whichever one you want to call it. It's 4901. Uh, three o'clock sharp. We will be starting the live show, How to Hustle Live Show. Hit the link in my bio to get the tickets, or you call me and I'll pull up on you with the physical tickets. Uh, Custom Hustle World, Custom Hustle World on Instagram and Twitter is my clothing line, custom jerseys, jackets, sweatsuits, t-shirts. Uh, we got the baby stuff too, the jerseys, the jackets and all of that. Get with me. We can customize it. Uh, at H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company that is at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. That is a tri-state area situation, but if you make it worth my while, I will slide. All right, radio rundown. We are Mondays on the eBlock Radio Network, 2 p.m. every Monday. GFT Radio Network every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Wednesday is, is 216 The Blend at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Thursday is WTAUPhilly.com every 12:30. I say Podcast and Radio Network, 10 a.m. every Friday, and THC Media every Saturday at 10 a.m. Sundays. We still looking to lock in that slot. All right, y'all. Y'all ready? Episode 69. This is both sides of the wall, part three. Um, this one is relationships. This one is about trying to hold on to your different relationships. Uh, we did last time on part two was the relationship between the child and the perspective of the kids' relationships with their parent while they locked up. But this time we want to get into your other relationships. So, um, because you will be the one on the other side of the wall, we're going to start with you. Relationships. How difficult is it to hold on to a relationship I understand how easy it is to leave a relationship, but break that all down for us. Um, <clears throat> it depends, man. If you have a wife, it's something different. If you have a girlfriend, that's totally something different. Uh, a lot of times you don't want to, you know, you don't want to mess with the phone too much. You know what I mean? Uh, it's a lot of drama to go in there, man, with that, man. You know, a lot of guys, there's a whole lot of negativity. It's a little bit of positive, but more negativity. You don't want to talk about your girl while you're in there with other bulls, you know what I mean? Because there's a lot of negativity going on. You know what I mean? Oh, she ain't thinking about you because up oh, you in here, you know she with the next bull. So, you know, you don't really want to talk. I've seen a lot of people talk on the phone, and then after they got off their phone, they run up to their hut. Yeah. You, you know what he's going to do in the hut. You know what I mean? He's going to tear up. So you try to... Stay off the phone unless you got to call your lawyer or whoever got money for you. But, you know, that's why we always say just hold it down until I get back. It ain't going to be a whole some, you know, that's just me, period. There ain't a whole lot of talking on the phone. You know what I mean? Because now it takes that one time for her not to answer the phone. And now you and yourself wondering where she at. Who wants that on their mind? You feel me? Takes that one time for her not to answer that phone. She can't call you back. Mm. You know All what right. I mean? Now, this is why I'm glad we got a guy and a girl. Sonny, we need your <laughs> perspective on the other side of the wall where you've missed that phone call. Uh, you're getting burnt out with this relationship over the phone. Nigga keep telling you about he needs you to go do this, that, and whatever. And ultimately, he his ass ain't home and ain't going to be home. How do you hold on to that situation? Do you hold on to that situation? 
break that see, relationship my, down for us on the other side. See, mine was different. Um, we were together, um, and then we kind of made it official why he was locked up because it happened like it was working on it, and then he got locked up, and then we like, all right, well, let's just see if this gonna work, whatever. I was not secretary until very later on. That's why I called that job as a secretary. Hey, Absolutely, you are. But yes. I was, but I was the money person. Um, when money needed to be moved around or I've collected money, I was that person. Everybody was dropping off to me, and I'd be either like if you was putting money on his books or sending him money for whatever, it, everything came through me. Um, family included. I was the one person that was the one stop shop. Anything else you needed me to handle, I wasn't about to do. But money, I was making sure like. You, you had money, so we had to make, make sure the money stayed where it was supposed to be. But if you needed it to go wherever it needed to go, that's where it went. I was like the money person that showed up to court. <laughs> that was my thing. The, um, the phone situation, completely opposite than what, what you said. Um, he had me on the phone all the time, 24-7, didn't matter. And he knew I worked. And it was like I had to tell him to stop calling me so much because I'm working. I can't sit on the phone with you for this period of time. And his excuse was, it's a life or death situation. It always was life or death. It's my freedom at risk, blah, blah, blah. I need you to do this, blah, blah, blah. And that was bothering me more so than anything because if you knew that I had planned to do something, he would purposely call me while I was out doing stuff. Like if I had, was, like, go ahead. Good question. Was he in the county or was he upstate? He, I mean, he, he was upstate. He was up um north from me. Okay. And it was like, so one one thing in particular that really bugged me I, it was my birthday. I don't really do much. Everybody know I don't really go anywhere. Um, but my friends took me out. We went out to eat and stuff like that. And he called me like right as we were like he called me up until I left and then decided like he knew I had left and I was going to get dinner and hang out with my friends for a little bit. And apparently that was not somebody must have gotten his head because he decided to call me while I was out there. And if I don't answer the phone, it's an argument. So that right, became so, an issue. Oh, give me the other side now. All right, she going out with her girlfriends at such and such birthday. How you think, How what, what's going on in your head when you know my girl going out with her girlfriends for Tamika birthday? Well, it seems like she was holding them down. But this is why, you know, I don't know the ball, but this is why he called you so much to make sure you wasn't doing what everybody else was saying you was doing. You understand what I'm saying? It's either you got two choices. It's to stay on top of it or just fall the fuck back and just do your time and come home. It sounds like he chose to stay on top of it. And then he stayed on top of it until that one time that you didn't answer the phone. And like you said, somebody must have gotten his head. You know what I mean? And uh, that's how that goes. Time I, I'm, I did not to interrupt, but kind of sort of. I never not answered him. That one time you kind no, of No, I did I, I did answer him. And then I told him, like you, you know I'm out. I'm out to dinner. Like so now we've, we've ordered food and I'm they're waiting on me to order my food and you want to talk to me for 15 minutes. This is not possible. So you know I'm out eating, eating. Call me back in like an hour or two and I should be done. And that that, that was an issue because it was like, no, 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 I need to talk to you now because you your friends should understand. And it's like, no, they no, they don't have to understand. It's my birthday. They're paying right. for me to go out. Hold up! This is what this is what this is what I wanted right here. So now we go, we're obviously we're not talking about y'all two. Y'all wasn't the ones that was in a relationship. Oh, though I'm saying from your perspective behind the wall, you know that your girl is going out for her girlfriend's birthday. They just going to dinner. They keeping it humble, but in your head, it's obviously going not going to be that situation. Want, what are you thinking? I, like I said, I don't know, boy, and I don't want to discredit my. No, anything, no, no. I'm saying I want my time. You, oh, he want Tommy, me, give me, I just want my time. I want my time. When I call you, I'm the most important thing right now. Fuck everything else. You talk to me. I'm only on here for 15 minutes. You can take 15 minutes out today. I'm not calling you back an hour. This is the only time I got to call you. I can't. If you can't talk to me in 15 minutes, or I don't care if it's your birthday or whatever the case may be, that's not me personally. I'm just hypothetically, you know. Probably, yeah. But yeah, that 15 minutes that I call you, I want you to stop doing what you're doing and talk to me for these 15 minutes. Who knows, you might be his, his calm down mood. It's a, it's a better word to say it, but you might be his calm down mood. 
you the sense of say normalcy. say say this get, say say the only sense of hold up I got you on you the almost sense of normalcy he gonna get for the half hour in his whole day where things ain't gonna be like you said this nigga's on my, over here on my right shoulder telling me you know she letting the nigga hit you know your man sliding over there dropping off that bread and he knocking at that <laughs> oh oh it's her birthday and on this side so, you got yeah and on this side you got the CEOs is tipping on you the whole time every time you try to do anything. Right. So, like I said, in my, what I did, I didn't do the phone. You know, my mom is the one that kept me sane because she, she constantly wrote me letters once a week. And that letters probably got me through it. I didn't have, I didn't want to talk, I didn't want to call home. Them letters that she gave me, that was what kept me not bugging out. It kept me calm in there because things could get ugly real quick. You understand what I'm saying? It could get ugly real quick. It could turn left real quick. So, yeah, you could have been his only outlet he had that was outside of that, that on the other side of that wall that he needed for that day. As long as I talk to you for this 15 minutes, I could do my bid, yo. See, as long as you I answer that phone, I could do my bid. But the day that so, you don't... You deny me that, who knows what's going to happen? So I've been the that. person who been uh, like middleman in it for these different relationships for years. And it's one of those things that I always try to have a conversation with both people. With the nigga who's in jail, like shout out to Kim Rock, because we did the first two both sides of the wall with Kim Rock. Um, what Rock is saying, you be so selfish because all you got is you. All your focus is, is you. You're not thinking about nothing else because it's nothing else for you to worry about. All you got to do is get yourself there through the day. And the person on the other end of the phone still has life going on. So I always try to explain like to my different friends and brothers in situations that be in jail to be like, you can't think that we all are sitting on the other side of the wall waiting for you to call us to give us 57 things to do. Like Sonny said, now I'm your secretary. I didn't sit here all day and wait for you to say, call him, call her, call him, call her, go see my son, call my mom, walk down the street and like Niggas have a whole list of stuff for you to do. <laughs> and right. it'd be like, did you ever even ask the girl, how was your day? That <laughs> like, part. That part. And that was my, and it wasn't even so much as that. It's that with, with my particular situation, I work during the day. I work in HR, so I'm always on the phone, right? So my, my, my job consists mostly of me being on the phone. You're not being like, and that was my situation with him. Is like you're not being considerate because not only are you calling me all all day, twenty four seven, like I'm not at work. Like you call me while I'm at work, probably at least four times. It's not that serious. Um, you you know what time I get off because you have been there to pick me up and everything else. You know we have an autistic child too. So and then I have a whole nother child outside of this. So like I got a lot going on. So while I'm like, and that was the thing is is not is not being considerate of my time management. Because I can't sit at the phone. Like, you know my job. I'm on the phone all day. I can't sit here and be chit-chatting with you and walk away from my desk all day when my job primarily consists of the phone. I could get in trouble with that. So I need you to understand that you can't do that all the time. And it's it's, it's now affecting my job. And you're saying, well, they need to understand. They don't need to understand shit. Because if I lose my job, who's maintaining the shit? You're there. Yeah. You, yeah. Like even like at that point, it's it's at my man. I, I work from nine to five. Call me at five at, at five fifteen if you want. Like I don't even give a damn because I'm probably already leaving. But like the lack of consideration, like if I'm out running doing errands, I can't sit and shop right and be on the phone with you for fifteen minutes because you know if you move a certain way, you lost service. This this now we gotta have an argument because I'm in right I'm shop right losing service and you mad like I got like I I can sit and fucking the aisle for fifteen minutes with an autistic child and we ain't move. Like that was the, the lack of consideration for me. And that's why I didn't last. Cause like, I don't have time for this. All right. So now this is another one that I got. Cause this was something else. This, uh, Kim Rock has said is it makes it so easy to just have all the relationships don't have any value. Cause it makes you so easy. If you've been in so long, like girls come go and you just, Oh, well, it is what it is. Any relationship will come and go. It just is what it is later on in your life though. Now, when you come home, how does that play a factor then? Do you still, is it a hard fight to try to not have relationships just be a, a fly by night type of situation? Is it hard for you to actually invest anything in it? Like, 
What would yeah. you have to say to that? Would you, what do you mean? Say, elaborate, say that a different way. Okay, because I you're in jail... Home. Because you in jail and it's so easy for you to just cut a relationship off because you said you got 12 niggas over here telling you, yo, you know she doing this, that, or whatever. If I easily right. just cut her off, and all right, now I ain't got to deal with none of that. Now when right. you come home, though, and you have different relationships, is, is it that it's still so easy for you to cut off those relationships? How do you fight through that to build a relationship? Like, how do you get out of that mentality of just, oh, fuck it? Well, it's, it's, it's like this, man. It's, you know, hopefully when you come home and you try not to end back up in there. So the next relationship that you do get into, you just try to, you know, build on not going back, make it, you know, try to move forward in your life, man. You don't, you know, you see you in here. You only have that man mentality to cut these girls off because you in there. You understand what I'm saying? Now, when you come home, it's a different story. You might want to find another relationship that you're going to grow on. Nah, because I'm talking, you, you can be, up. hold up, we could be talking a totally different relationship. You got a new girl. You got not just yeah. that same old girl that you did all that to. That's what I'm saying. Like, right. how you, hard is it to adjust, though, to that? It's, it's not going to be hard because you once, you once you come out, you find a new girlfriend or whatever the case may be, Two thing, one thing you want to try to do, not to go back so you lose her again, this one, and you're trying to build and grow off of your new relationship. You know what I'm saying? Um, you don't, you don't, you don't get the mind state that every woman is always going to cheat because you're in jail, and that's all they tell you. That's all everybody talk about. You know what I mean? It's a whole lot of women bashing in there because of the negativity. It's a whole lot of I don't want to think about her because there's nothing I could do. You know what I mean? You do a whole lot of thinking. A whole lot of thinking. So that's the last thing you want to think about. So when you do get home, you want everything to be right with your next relationship. You right, don't want to so think the same way you think that you was in there. You know what I mean? All right. Because Sonny, when, yeah. Shout out to Zay. See you over here in the corner. <laughs> How does that affect you now in a relationship? Things didn't work out now with this nigga because of all of the different things that can go wrong with their relationship. Now, how does that affect you with the next guy or the next guy? Do you come in with your bulletproof vest of, I'm not going to let nobody use me because this nigga used me all up? And does that hinder you from the next relationship or two? It kind of hinders you only because, like, I, I think it's more from, 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 like I said, from my experience was the lack of control he had over himself. He had to control something, right? Mm-hmm. And essentially that was me for a period of time. I think for me, it was not, it taught me two things, never to deal with somebody in jail because I don't have time for that. Like, I, I understand that you need that, somebody to make you feel like you're that only person and you are in all actuality, but like, I'm not about to sit there and c consistently um, um, like pet the bear, so to speak, to make make you okay with it. Like, I'm just not out here and you got to understand that, whatever. But on the outside looking in, relationships going forward, it's like, for me, certain things I saw in him, which I hadn't seen before, if I see that in, in the next dude, I'm not going to deal with them. For certain, like certain, it was a lot of stuff about him that came out while he was locked up in our within our relationship. And it was like, okay, so I know the signs of certain things I'm not going to deal with. Um, on the, the positive thing I would say it, it taught me is it taught me that it's like a long distance relationship. That's not for me. <laughs> That's not for me. I like you to be in, in my bubble. I want to be in your bubble. I don't have time for schedule time and all this stuff like that. So that that's a positive thing out of it for me. But the negative part was seeing a lot of the red flags in him that I, if I see in somebody outside, I'm like, yeah, no. Cause that lets me know that you're, still in that mindset. So a lot of people can't let go of that, that jail mentality when they come home. So you can either question. fall right back into that and relationship that's similar to that or, and I don't have time for that. Like I'm not, I've never been a person that had to tell you where I was going when I was going on me back or nothing like that, or just, it was so much. And it's like, I'm not that person. I don't go anywhere as, as it is, but like to constantly check in on somebody before I go do stuff is, is that, that, that was crazy to me. I, I could never. I, Go ahead, I have two questions. Say something. Can I, get, can I ask for two questions? Go ahead. 
All right, okay, so now you cut him off. The next guy that you get into a relationship, is it gonna be to somebody totally different that's not, that's not maybe doing anything out here that could possibly wind up up in jail and you right back to where you start all over again? Um, yeah, so I'm going back to my normal dating habit back when I was young. I like nerds, you know, the, the, the anime people, you know, they watch the Japanese, I need to be a part of that situation. So I'm protected. I need a nine to five. You can have, you can wear outfits to work. I don't care what you are, but like I purpose, but I'm not actively dating. I think that that relationship did a lot for me. And, and the, lot, the one behind that one was problematic for me. So I'm on a break anyway, but like, I th I think the next guy I actually do settle down with is probably not going to be complete. It's going to be completely opposite of that type of vibe because that was like my first real bad boy. So, you know, he got sucked in and, you know, had a kid, all this goofy shit. So oh. <laughs> the second question is, uh, so what happens when he get come home? Like, will he be, I mean, like, you know, will y'all vibe or, you know, will y'all He's, he's, he's already home. He's already home. Oh, okay. Um, from that experience in itself, he, he it like, even awkward, after the experience, right? he, he was in that mindset of he felt like I hurt him even though I didn't. And that's where he he intended on hurting me, which is that, exactly what he did no. while we were allegedly trying to work things out and see how it worked outside. No, no. And it was more of the same. Mm. So it was like, I'm good. You be over there. I'm over here. Stop. And I, I don't need them problems anymore. Like, you, we just got a kid again. That's all I got to deal with you about. You hear him over here at Olympics. <laughs> all right. So now before we wrap this one up, uh, I want to go back to part two of both sides of the wall. Cause Sonny, I know that you had that. You said you had that same experience as far as the parent. Uh, you wanted to talk a little bit about that. Dive into that a little bit for me before we switch this up. And Sonny's being attacked right now. <laughs> Unmute yourself. I'm sorry. I'm running away from him because he's doing too much, but no, um, my, my dad was in jail. For, I think since I was three until I got out of high school and we didn't go see him. We didn't have any contact with him because of what he did to go in there. It was child endangerment and all that stuff. But, you know, he did some weird, some weird shit. I'm not going to get all into it, but yeah, um, he basically, our relationship, my relationship with him was I tried to be like, I, I think he forgot that when he came back home, we were all grown. So he came from that standpoint of trying to be a father to us as if we were children and we were grown ass people. Mm. So um, me and him do not get along. Um, we get along for short periods of time. I'll talk to him, but I won't get into depth conversations with him because I'm so much like him as a kid that he can't, it bothers him. <laughs> so y'all never had that type of conversation that, uh, that like Deuce and Ken Rock had on the show? Well, we, I, so... He attempted a conversation with me, and but I think his problem is I am him when he was a kid, and I'm very unapologetically myself, and that's just how he was as a kid. You know, older, he's learned to like be nice about his words, and I'm just really direct. So we had the conversation, and he was telling me that I had to understand that his choices are the reason, no, that circumstances that he was in made him go to jail. And I said, no, it was your choices. You chose to do these things, and this is why you were locked up. You chose that over your kids. You had a couple of us before I even came along and you kept doing what you were doing. And the last thing that got you locked up is something that you harmed one of your kids. So I don't have to understand any of those, any of those conversations. What I, what, what I need, what I need you to understand is what I said to him is that we're not these little kids anymore. We're grown people. So you need to figure out how to find a relationship with us, like find, like make a relationship with each of us individually. To, to get us back because we you are our dad. We're the only dad we got. So if you want to actively try to figure out how to be our dad as adults, then that would be great. And if you can't succeed with us, you got grandkids. So figure them out. But as far as me having to understand and no real apology from you, I can't like there, there we're not we're not going to get past anything because I need you to be accountable. And right now you're giving me excuses as to why you decide to do drugs, drink, and do the nonsense that you were doing. Copy that. So. Um, all right, now <laughs> this is the part of the show where we switch it up and we talk about what the guest has going on. Uncle B, 
tell us a little bit about the BTG podcast. Shouts out to my guys. I just hey, I popped my band the other day too. Oh. How you do that? Uh, cutting the joint off from the concert the other night. It was under the band, and when I cut it, I cut both of them. Mm. They were some thick bands. <laughs> some scissors was thicker. <laughs> yeah, man. Go ahead, we um, talk a little bit about the Bridging the Gap podcast. Oh uh, man, so we got a podcast, man. Bridging the Gap with no G. Um, talk about the everyday struggle, man. A lot of laughs. Um, a lot of shit going on. Talk about our daily, all of our daily routines. You know what I mean? Both of the guys is married. I used to be, say I used to be single but married. What I used to say? What was my saying? Married but single. single. But, married but single. So, yeah. I think I'm just single now. <laughs> he thinks. He's yeah. not really sure. That's the kind yeah. of problematic. But, yeah, right? man, we, <laughs> but yeah, man, but we, you know, we we hit the streets a lot. You know, I'm always out there giving away. We do a lot of giveaways, man. I, um, it's a really fun podcast, man. We're going to keep you laughing and, um, you know, just trying to do our thing, man. We try to get back a lot to the community. And um, we out here all the time, man. You know, working on episode 20, 124, I believe. Is it 124? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. Almost dropped the joint. All right. Yeah. Sonny has some technical you know, I, difficulties you know, on her end. Go ahead. You know, I don't usually, you know, I usually don't do the interviews. You know, the brains are usually here. You know what I mean? Nah, but you know what I'm saying? This is why I this is why I wanted just you on a drink. Let's shine a light on Uncle. Let's let Uncle get his shit off sometime. Yeah, man. You know, try and reach out to more casters, man. You know, Philly support Philly. You know what I'm saying? You know, make this thing work. Sonny, now you know? let's tell tell us how we could have sex with Sonny twice a month. Cause yeah, oh, oh my god. Does it actually yeah. does it, hold on, fuck all that? Does it cost anything? Excuse oh no, it's what? free, oh. It is free. You know, oh. you know what? It's free. <laughs> free, oh. Nah, so yeah, I do the sex with Sunny two months, um, two Fridays a month. Um, we talk about everything sex related, all things, every, nothing's off limits. If you if you already been there, you know what it is. And if you have not been there, then that's a personal issue you missed out on and you need to catch up. Um, right. we actually have a show coming up on the 24th. I'm trying to, I got two ladies. Hopefully they stick on to it. We got a little pajama, a girl's night going on. So, uh, I can't wait for so that. So what you're topic. saying is this Friday on the GFT radio YouTube page. Well, no, it's the 24th. Well, this Friday, what you're saying is on the GFT page, they can have sex with Sunny with two guests. So this is like a menage Orgies you know what? You can't, you can't, yeah. So you can't. That's what it sounds like to me, Uncle. <laughs> it is not. It is not this Friday, so, though. I, I don't want to say it like that, but that's how it sounds. That's how what? it's making the sound. On Friday, I can have sex with Sonny. Well, everybody yes, can have sex with Sonny. You just can't actually have what? physical sex with Sonny. But oh, you can have Lord. sex with Sonny. See, Uncle, she has Jesus. two guests already. So what you want to do is call third. That way you'll be in the rotation. <laughs> I'll be in the rotation. Yeah. You know what? Y'all all fired. Y'all all fired. That's the oh. ongoing joke. Who's having sex with Sonny? So it's always funny. Because people are like, what? What did he say? And then that's that's how, you know, we just we start chaos. That's what we do. Now, but we do it two, two Mondays, um, two Fridays a month. So we um unfortunately we had to skip this past Friday because I had stuff going on. So we we will be back the 24th. I got two ladies come come and hang out with me, and we're gonna have wine and probably some food and and dish. So this is gonna be a fun thing. Um so I'm so excited for that. Um, and it's pajama theme. So if you pull up, pull up in your PJs. Oh, Let them know where to follow you at, Sunday. Sunny. Huh? Let them know where to follow you at. Oh, you can follow me at I am Sunny underscore D, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and TikTok. Also go to my website, unreservedlyme.com, although I've not posted on there in a while. I will be. Uh, <laughs> I have, I have a, when you said I have unreservedly me, I thought you was going to throw that out earlier. Well, unreservedly <laughs> me. I am yeah. unreservedly me. Go ahead. Okay. I have a qu- I have a question. Is this live? Like these shows are these lives or are pre recorded? Oh, it's no, live. live. Oh lord! It's live sex with Sunny O. Yes. Yeah, you go, we go live and we we chit chat. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> that is <laughs> an hour GFT ra- It's GFT Radio on YouTube. Yeah, GFT Radio <laughs> Network <laughs> on um. Look us up on oh. Facebook. We're on. We're everywhere. Just type in GFT Radio Network or GFT Radio, and you'll see our logo. And it's 
It's us. It's just follow us, like, subscribe, share, comment, do all that. Also, every Monday, every Monday we are on GFT at 10 o'clock. Uh, Twitch. And we'll YouTube. be there this Monday, right? Uh, Tomorrow. No, nah, that'll be. We're there every Monday. <laughs> uh, every Monday. Every Monday, 10 o'clock. You know what I'm saying a little late for, for you, you early risers like you won't. But um, yeah, I'm, that's, yeah. that's both sides of the world, part three. I appreciate y'all both coming on. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.